All right, our first invention is one of those big ideas. Here it is. Imagine if every house in Australia could harvest solar energy, not from one or two solar panels on their roof, but from the entire surface area of their roof. And how would you get all those solar panels up there? You'd just paint them on. Imagine a world where every single building could generate its own clean, green electricity directly from the sun. Well, we're working on taking that idea from the realm of science fiction into the reality of science fact. Our invention is a solar cell technology that can be applied to roofs and other building surfaces to generate clean, green electricity from the sun. At the core of the invention are tiny semiconducting plastic materials that are dispersed in water to produce a coating containing cells capable of capturing solar energy and generating electricity. Initially, the coating will be put onto plastic sheets that are placed on the roof of a house. However, in the long term, it may be possible to directly apply the solar cell onto a roof or building surface. Our invention has the potential to satisfy our ever-growing appetite for power and to end our reliance on the dirty, non-renewable technologies that are used to generate our electricity today. Please welcome from Newcastle, Paul Dastor. Hi, Paul. Hello, James. And we need to welcome uh, the 17 students from Newcastle University that worked on you with Absolutely. Them. Hello to all well you. Done. Well done. Congratulations to you. OK, this is a solar panel that pe some people it have is. on their roof at the moment. And it's big and it's inflexible and it's reasonably heavy. And you want to replace it with this. We do. We want to replace it with plastic. And this can be created a lot more cheaply, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the materials that we use here are plastics or polymers, yeah. and we can print them. Yeah. And so we can print them probably as cheaply as you can print crisp packets. And then down the track, you might be able to just paint your house. Is that right? That's right. We think that there probably is no reason why you can't eventually directly apply that to the surface of the roof itself. Now, you and your students have made a house uh, and it's not hooked up to anything. It's just going to run off our lights. Do you want to open it up? Sure. Uh, the only light that it's receiving is our studio lights. Uh, you can see inside, open wide, come inside. So turn it on and uh, you will see soon that it begins to uh, harvest the energy. The fans on, the lights are on and the television, there, there's someone watching television, I wonder what they're, uh, wow, they're watching the new inventors, isn't that, uh, isn't that wonderful? What else would you want? What else would you want? <laughs> Come over to the panel, because I think now, those who have solar panels, there's a big sense of, you know, I'm doing this because I've got a bit of money and I should do it. Absolutely. Rather than your technology can change it to a hard-headed economic decision in self-interest. I, I want to get solar because it will save me money by, you know, in a year and a half time. And, and let me put it another way. What we're actually now saying is that we've got the opportunity that everyone can have solar. It's not just if yeah. you're wealthy. It's there for everybody. As long as you've got a paintbrush. And so, uh, Paul, how, how efficient are these solar panels compared to, say, mm. silicon ones? Well, this, again, this comes back to this, this question about what's the, what's the important number. The efficiency of these devices, at best, is around about 5 to 6 percent. So that says of all the light that lands on them when the sun is at its peak, they will convert about 5 to 6 percent of that. Standard silicon cell is about 13, 14, 15 percent. Mm. They're getting higher all the time. But of course, we can now access the energy over the whole roof. Yeah. So it's not the efficiency that may not be the necessarily the most important quantity. It's actually how much energy can we get? And, and usually, if a, if a roof is sloped, when, when th that area is being inefficient, the other side might be being a lot more efficient. And, so that's, and that's a really interesting point. We're coming back, uh, I guess, to, to the properties of the materials themselves. It's interesting. These materials respond much better at lower light levels. In other words, whereas a standard silicon cell may be 13% efficient, but when the sun goes down, it doesn't work so well. With these materials, they work much better at low light levels. In fact, they can even work in moonlight. 
And poor really? Oh, really? Is that right? Wow. Don't, don't get me wrong. Change the name. Don't get me Solar wrong. Lunar power. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say you'd get yeah, as yeah, much yeah. light, but they actually respond and will generate even at those low light levels. And how far away is the paint, probably, Paul? I think it's really exciting. I think that we're at the point where we could see it within two to three years away. And what do you think the life of the paint might be once you put it on a roof? Well, before you have to repaint it. Well, you'd know when your light started flickering. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right, yeah, exactly. I think, again, that's, that's, that's a really good question. The materials have to be sealed to stop water and air getting into them. At the moment, we're looking at lifetimes that can be up to around about seven years, for example, with the correct encapsulation. And do you just paint over it again then? Well, or? I think ultimately we could see it being painted on. Realistically, the first way I think we'll see it rolled out is in the form of plastic sheets, yes. where everything is sealed and all the connections are there for you, if you see what I mean. But ultimately, yeah, possibly. And then, of course, you'd need to think of some sealant that would go over the top of the material. So, mm. Yeah, Paul, I've been reading a bit of the research into sprayable plastic solar cells. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure from what I've read that they are chemical-based solvents. Are you the first that is water-soluble, that are we, in a water base? We believe, and that's what we've just patented, that we've actually been able to be the first to actually make devices that are efficient from water-based materials. That's huge. Well, we the green so. building, that's huge. Yeah. That's right. And, and now, uh, once it's in situ and it's on the roof, birds landing, little claws going through the sealant that you're sealing, bird poo, bit of corrosive environment, how's that going to work with where you're at at the moment? Well, you're right. If you, if you start to damage the cell, then it's not going to work. But, of course, the fact that these things are so cheap means that I can see the situation where you'll just call the patch-up man He'll come, he'll put a new piece of plastic. The cost of the material is low. One question though, if for these to be truly environmentally friendly, you have to look at the whole life cycle cost and how Absolutely. much energy it goes into producing the solar cell as well as the energy you're going to get at the other end. Have you done that analysis and what well, did it show? Standard silicon devices, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, took about that time to pay back the energy cost. They're much better now. They're, they're down at around about two to three years. With these materials, they're just plastic. The materials are so thin, we're talking about, the latest models are looking around about three months. Summing up, Chris? I can't get over the fact that, that we can actually do this ourselves, generate our own power, remove our de de re total reliance on external sources. That's got to be the way we've got to go. So absolutely sensational. So? Yeah, I'm just fascinated by the possibilities of paint on and then energy generation on the move. And I think as all of us like to have portable stuff all over the place, wearing your energy on your head or whatever, it's, it's totally the way of the future. It's really exciting. James. Yeah, look, this is the future. And, and if you really can capture that low light level, I can even see people actually harvesting energy from the street lights next to their house. So. I like that. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Uh, well done, Paul. And you also used one of my favourite phrases in the whole world when you said, that's exactly right, James. <laughs> <laughs> Although you were talking about him. Uh, please thank Paul Dastor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.